Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's very special FileMaker webinar. Um, today, we're going to be introducing you all to the FileMaker 14 platform. I have with me uh, Kieran Saunders, our FileMaker product specialist, and Tony Speakman, our regional director. I should also introduce myself. I'm Mike Crook. I'm the marketing manager here for FileMaker in the UK. Uh, before we get started, I'd just like to say if you have any questions during the course of the session, feel free to ask them using the questions panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, we will have a lot of questions during this session. We've got a lot of people here today, but we'll do our best to address as many as we can um, towards the end of the session. So that's all you'll hear from me until then. So over to Tony to get us all started. Thanks, Mike. Before we go any further, um, I'd just like to summarize for you the four most important things about this new version of the FileMaker platform. The first is that it's about helping our customers and our users to automate their business solutions faster than ever before. Secondly, it's about providing users with access to FileMaker databases over the web using mobile browsers, including the Chrome browser. Third, it's about letting our users design their solutions for the times. It's extremely important to create FileMaker solutions that look good, if not better, than the apps that they're now used to. And so we've packed this new version with tools for creating absolutely fabulous, gorgeous looking FileMaker solutions. And lastly, it's about a complete overhaul of the FileMaker Go interface. You'll see that we've made the new FileMaker Go uh, compliant with uh, the current iOS interface guidelines. So it's all inspired by iOS 8. So those are the four top things. Um, the um, summary slide here is about FileMaker, and I'm sure very many of you on this broadcast today uh, are familiar for, with FileMaker. Um, uh, the majority of people, I think, these days know that we are an Apple subsidiary. Uh, the incredible thing is that we've actually been around now for some 30 years, and as one of the major publications said this year, uh, sorry, this week, is it's not, it's not just impressive that FileMaker's been around for 30 years, it's the fact that the versions still keep getting better and better. So with some 20 million uh, units of the software shipped in 15 different languages, and now quite an impressive 1.5 million downloads of FileMaker Go for the iPad and iPhone. Um, I think um, our heritage is, is, is incredible, um, but we really are up to date with the times with um, the number of people using the system on iPad, iPhone, and uh, increasingly now on the, on the mobile browsers. So you'll have heard me talking there about the Pharmaca platform. We do very much talk about the platform now rather than the individual components, because really today it's about sharing business solutions. So the server is the fundamental part of that. From the server, you can then deploy to the relevant device for the relevant user. So be that FileMaker Pro on a desktop, be it FileMaker Go on an iOS device, or be it WebDirect on either um, remote desktop browsers or indeed on mobile browsers. So. Um, amongst the new features, and I'm going to be as, as brief as possible on these so that Kieran can get into actually showing you them in action, um, we have um, the new script workspace, um, which as I said at the beginning is all about pe being able to develop, develop these solutions quicker and more effectively. Um, so. Uh, we, we set about making um, a tool that you don't need to be a programmer for, but if you're going to automate a business process, um, you do need to be able to uh, write scripts. Um, so even though you may not be a computer programmer, writing scripts um, is about automating those processes, and so we brought it all together into one place to make it as efficient uh, as possible. With WebDirect, it's a it's an innovative technology. Um, as I said, it's supporting mobile browsers now. Um, but equally important is it is faster. Um, and there's two components to this. One is you can achieve things um, from a user point of view much more impressively, much more readily. But it also means that the hardware that you're requiring to run these systems don't need to be as powerful. Um, so you then have some more flexibility in that area in terms of costs um, and deployment. With the 
design tools, um, we've uh, again responded to what people expect to see. Um, most of us are used to apps on iPads and iPhones and other devices and they're intuitive and they're clean and it's very important that we can create these FileMaker solutions to, to look like this. Um, so we've for example created the color palette so that it will now offer you colors that are compatible with the FileMaker theme um, that you've chosen to use. Uh, we're able to um, get objects um, that again behave in a way that's consistent with your overall look and feel. Um, we've got uh, the button icons now built into the product. You've been people have been building buttons into their uh, system for some time, but they've done it typically by importing graphics. The fact that these uh, professionally designed buttons are now part of the product means you can be consistent across layouts but even more important you can be much more efficient in the deployment of them you're not handling graphics um, uh, uh, whilst you're um, deploying the, the solution. Uh, yeah, the infield labels um, again is, it help to uh, simplify the design and things like button bars and navigation um, bars allow you a consistency across the design of your solution so you can have navigation uh, bars that travel through the different layouts and look and appear in exactly the same way um, which again is helping us to achieve the look and feel that people have now come to expect. And finally, um, we're, we're looking at the launch, the new launch center, which is allowing you to deliver a solution that people don't have to be in any way technical to use. You don't have to go and open a file. You quite uh, simply click on an icon. Now, we supply icons, but you can custom make your own icons as well. Um, but more importantly, or as importantly, it walks across the entire platform so when you create these whether you're deploying them on a desktop on an iPad um, an iPhone or indeed on a browser you're going to be using the same icons to, uh, to open those solutions you've got a consistency of expectation and experience the iOS interface is uh, as I said at the beginning right up to date um, you've got the ability to do lock screen orientation um, uh, signature uh, has been improved um, so that when you offer a signature to somebody they can actually see the signature within the text that they are agreeing to whereas previously the signature took over the screen and the previous layout was, was disappeared momentarily um, within the video you've now got video and audio playback control and so you can actually see the them within the context of the overall solution again it doesn't take over the entire screen of your iPad or whatever you're using it on um, and we've enabled touch the touch keyboards as well so the sorts of things that people are increasingly used to on these sorts of devices are being supported from within FileMaker within server the <coughs> excuse me um, there are a number of very powerful new features. Um, we got used to the idea that if you lost connection from FileMaker Go on the iPad, you know, it, it would reconnect as soon as you got connection again. We've enabled the same thing with FileMaker Pro. We've improved security um, and provided password strength indication, uh, indicators, which again is the sort of thing that we're seeing on all, all the web applications that we're used to. Uh, and a very important feature um, for the more experienced administrator is st the standby server. So you can have a complete duplicate version of the server running in parallel. So if anything goes wrong, you can switch straight across to that and you get to pretty much interrupted, un uninterrupted service. So uh, that was a very quick run through, um, hopefully not too fast, um, but that was done on purpose uh, so as to give as much time as possible to Kieran. So I'll hand over to Kieran now. Thank you, Tony, and uh, good afternoon. Um, so we're going to be uh, using a, a demo file today. So we're going to be using an advertising agency, which, which is a, a nice change from some of the demos we've been using in the in the years uh, uh, past. In that we're much more focusing on workflow, which of course is is what we're really all about. Having all of these different uh, uh, um, uh, clients, wherever you are, wherever you need your data to be, you're going to be doing some kind of work, and, and that involves some type of workflow. So we're going to be looking at a, an approval process, uh, managing some clients, some projects, and some digital assets, and hopefully we'll be demoing some of the new 14 features along the way. 
Okay, well, the first thing I wanted to show you uh, is the new launch center. It really is, uh, you miss it. I've been demoing over the last couple of days. I've, I've suddenly, in the middle of an event, switched from using 13 to using 14. Uh, and it's uh, it, it really brought it home to me, some of the changes um, that we've brought in. And this is one of them. Being able to have a launch center that, uh, as you can see at the top here, we've got the favorites as well as your recents. You can see your solutions as well as the hosts. You can uh, switch from a list view to a to a form view, or just see the favorites that you've that you've um, uh, highlighted by uh, clicking on the little star there. Um, so uh, this this is across all of the different platforms. So this will appear in WebDirect on on and on uh, go on the iPad, um, and it's really nice to be able to to add these uh, solution these custom icons in. So let's uh, show you how you do that. So let's just uh, pick on a, a new starter solution. Uh, let's pick uh, say personal records and drop that to the desktop. So I'll just close that down and uh, open up Farmac again to uh, to see where that where that is. And we can see that we, that's been put in there with a custom icon already. But if we were to open that up again, we can go and I'll show you how, how you do that. So we just go simply to File and File Option. And the second tab along there um, gives you the option to put a icon in there. So you can choose from any of the, the icons that we've given you, which actually hit a, an awful lot of situations. Or you can just use the standard FileMaker um, icon. Or you can go in and uh, grab a, a custom one. Now, I just took a screenshot of my desktop here. So you can go along and choose that uh, custom um, uh, button and then go and grab that, that screenshot or your own uh, your own file. So again, if we close this and then open up the, the launch center again, we'll see that the icon changes and that will change across the whole, uh, the whole uh, platform. So really neat, really like that. Okay. So let's open up um, the solution that we're going to be looking at, uh, and that is uh, our uh, approvals. So let's just uh, have a look at the host. So I've I've got a couple on my my new host here, and there's the approval files that I want to go into. Okay, so we're we're um, logged in under uh, Sam here, and we can see that he's got his approvals and then all the approvals uh, that are in there. And the first thing that maybe you'll notice if I actually just uh, um, zoom in using the FileMaker uh, buttons down the bottom there, if I can zoom in, you can see that this header part hasn't changed. So all of these parts, these navigation parts and these bits of information hasn't, hasn't zoomed in with the solution. So you can imagine um, using your iPad, and I'll, I'll show that later, but you can zoom up and down this, uh, uh, this layout, and the navigation part on the top hasn't uh, changed. It's uh, similar to the header part that was in the list view, but you can now have this functionality within the form view, which uh, um, really, really takes hold when you're on the iPad. It really, really helps. So let's uh, look at, if you haven't worked out how to do that already, let's just go into layout mode, and you can see that it is just a normal part, but it's now called uh, a new part called top navigation. And of course, we've got a bottom navigation as well. So you can imagine Again, on the iPad, having something down if you're if you're holding a tablet in portrait view, having something down the bottom left and right, uh, whether that be navigation or some kind of functionality keys down there, uh, is really helpful. So that's your top navigation part. Okay, well, let's go into some of this uh, details page and, and have a look at uh, what's going on here. So there's a few new parts in here. We've got a button bar, and let's uh, let's show you how that works. So if I go over to the to the screen here, we've got a video here for for uh, uh, Sam to. Uh, to approve, you can watch the video in line, which is normal functionality for the desktop. Uh, view that sort of uh, video, see how it's going, and then he can click on this uh, approve button and start typing in his uh, start typing in his comments for that uh, for that review. So you can see some nice little functionality down here. We, he's made a little comment, so he's got a little speech bubble, and you can go and read his comments while. Uh, reading other people's comments as well, of course. So that's great. So how uh, let's let's have a look at uh, how this uh, this this works a little bit and and what we've done here. 
So this is just uh, one button, and what I quite like is having this uh, this one button, well, two buttons combined, and you've got this curvature here, which is quite nice. I'll set one up uh, from scratch in a minute, but just to bring up the inspector to show you, uh, very simple to get this curvature uh, on there is just to put the corner radius to 50 and to have all of the, uh, the all of the points curved there. Really nice and simple, uh, but a great little uh, a great little addition. And, and again, something you may have gone into Photoshop to do, uh, but you've now got this this quite nice little uh, button bar uh, set up in, in in seconds, which is great. So the other thing you might have noticed of these uh, these labels, uh, inline labels or placeholders. Let's have a look at how that worked. So obviously, when when I when you go in there and start typing, they disappear, and also within fine mode as well, you have control of whether they appear or not. So you can have a different uh, a different appearance there. So let's have a look at that. So just on this notes field. Uh, just up in the data tab of the inspector window, we can ha just have the placeholder text um, when field is empty in, in uh, brackets there, and you just type in your text. Of course, you've got the calculation window, um, which is uh, bringing up our new uh, script space, so we'll come to that later. But you can go in and use the, of course, that calculation to uh, to control that, as well as having a, um, a checkbox for showing it or not in fine mode. So really useful. Um, one takeaway that I, I, uh, I must admit I didn't think of straight away until what some of my colleagues pointed out to me you know it sounds great and suddenly you think well I'm just going to use this everywhere you know why would I have a label next to it it's just using up space it's amazing just to have the label in a text field of course when you come to dates and to numbers if you haven't got the label next to it and it's a, it's a, you've got a couple of dates on the screen which date is it um, so labels are still useful they still you still need to have them uh, but if it's obvious first name last name and you can see that uh, that data uh, or you've got something some situation you're designing for an iPhone for a limited uh, a limited size. They're just extremely useful, really nice, and and uh, uh, pretty pretty fast to set up. So that's great. So that's inline uh, placeholders. So let's have a a quick look at um, uh, bringing over um, maybe uh, maybe Go and bringing over uh, some uh, showing the button bars and how that works. So I've got my iPad here. I'm just going to bring that over. And there's the WebDirect. You can see the WebDirect, uh, the uh, launch screen working with that custom icon, but I'm just going to bring up uh, Farmaker Go. And I've got, I'm, uh, I'm logged in as Sam. I'm on the road now and I'm on the approvals page, but uh, I, I'm missing some functionality up here uh, quite on purpose. I need uh, some navigation uh, buttons up here. So let's go and see how I can uh, put that in. So I'm going to switch over the same layout here. So let's uh, let's uh, take you through the button bar. So it's up in the toolbar, right next to the button, uh, and let's just let's show you what you you may have had to do. So you would have maybe you wanted three buttons. You'd have to draw them on, give them a name, and uh, potentially then I don't know maybe duplicate them and bring them over. We've got you know the guides will come up maybe to help you, but. Uh, uh, you know, you bring it over here. That's great, but I want to select all of them, and and you, you know, it's going to take you a while to get them all perfectly spaced between them all, uh, the right font. Um, certainly, when you're you're working for multilingual, you know, the, the text is going to expand. You're going to have to design for that. Uh, um, you know, it's not as easy as it first seems to put three buttons on the form. It does take some time. So let's uh, let's get rid of those and bring on our new button bar. So it's just a, a very simple draw. It goes straight on. By default, you get three. And you can start typing in your um, your labels. I had a mistype there. OK, great. So. Very quickly to do that, uh, of course, you've got some functionality up here to uh, place the buttons uh, vertically or horizontally very nicely. We've got the additions also, uh, which is in the button control as well, but we've got the additions of being able to have just a label with our preset 120 uh, uh, labels here, um, icons, sorry whether they be at the bottom of the top left and right so we can we have quite a nice uh, amount of functionality there and of course you can see as soon as you put a, an icon on you know you, your text may 
they've wrapped I mean it's wrapped automatically which is very nice but if I, if I want it to be uh, alongside and or all on one line it's simply the case of, of dragging it out it's a very nice functionality it really really uh, it really pays uh, to start using one of these uh, you can choose which is the ag uh, active uh, segment going on a layout um, which is just uh, just brilliant you also got the functionality of choosing a pop-up to go along with each one of these uh, buttons as well which is great and where they pop up where they can pop up fantastic okay so what's what else can we do well let's put these icons on and see how they do so maybe i have uh, this one for all approvals uh, maybe i go and uh, uh, choose this one for my approvals Let's choose the, a similar style, uh, and then we go to projects. So uh, I've got a graphic designer. He's 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 uh, designed designed for me a custom logo. So let's go and grab that one. You just have to hit the uh, the plus button, and I've got a nice PMG uh, sitting here. So that's all great, and that works very nice. Um, it goes in. Um, and even um, increases in size. One of the functionalities that we've got now um, within Pharmica is the ability to change. I have to bring over the inspector window. We can actually have, we've got a bit more control over the different um, uh, parts of objects. So we've got uh, control over the dividers between these button bars and segments and the icons themselves. So we could change, you know, on a hover, uh, what these look like. You know, maybe we could make, and again, if I, yeah, it's the icon, that's right. I can make them go a bit gray maybe when I, I hover over them. For uh, the PNG, as you can see, I haven't got the, that, that right. I can't, I can't uh, go in and, and edit that PNG. Uh, while if I use a, a S, a SVG, and I've got one here, you can see that's changed and that's using the same functionality we can actually go in so the recommended or, or you know it's up to you you can choose both uh, but if you do want these these colors to actually change based on states which is i think very very nice it's worth investing some time looking at these svgs and, and, and getting a, a set of icons that are built within those uh, within that format there's lots of knowledge bases as well and after the webinar, webinar we can we can send you out a link uh, to those knowledge bases if you wish Okay, so let's uh, let's start adding some functionality in here. Um, and of course, uh, before we go too far, let's just uh, save that over and uh, uh, see that appear on the iPad. Bring that up and maybe shrink that up a bit. Great. So we can see that over in the iPad works very well. So let's uh, let's start hooking up some uh, functionality to this. So let's uh, just simply do a um, go to layer. Let's let's pick on the projects button and go to the projects uh, part. So uh, a simple double click uh, down to the bottom in the, uh, the little uh, button bar setup dialog box. We've got two options here: single step or form a script. So a single step will bring up our new uh, script uh, workspace. So we could go in here and say, okay, I know it's something like uh, go to, uh, there it is. I could just a very simple go to layout, or I could start typing go to layout, GTL. Very nice, a little arrow down, enter to select, space bar to bring up um, uh, the, uh, the further on window, uh, again, a space bar, and I, I'm, I'm, You'll have to trust me here, but I'm only using the keyboard, and I could be going down to uh, projects on the tablet. That sounds great, and then OK that. So very, very simple to 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 kick off a script, add it to it. Uh, you know, in your head, you've probably been thinking of these scripts as as go to layout um, GTL. Now you can actually just type them straight in. OK. So that works very, very well. That's great. That's working. Uh, that's working lovely. So a quick, uh, uh, a quick little thing to see is that we've now got uh, these icons uh, in layout mode on the buttons and, and elsewhere, and you can see what what the button will do. So by hovering over, we can see that it's a go to layout. Really useful. Um, I, I, I've already used it a couple of times just to highlight where you've got something going on. Uh, you can actually see, you know, what the hide script is without having to click on it, find it, and actually uh, find it within the inspector window, which is great. Okay, well let's add some other functionality in here. So I want to um, change this single layout uh, level script, um, and let's go and do that so i can now very simply convert this to a full-blown script with one button giving it a name G 
give it a name of course and then I can start typing away in here um, so before I do that let's just save this script and I'll go into the, uh, the script workspace and uh, show you the, uh, the fully fledged one okay so completely and utterly redesigned. We've looked at, uh, at other uh, other available IDEs and tried to take the best that we could from them while maintaining um, the, the usability that we've always had. So we've got scripts along the left here. Um, we can search for scripts. So um, let's go and uh, f uh, find the find the one we we had. Uh, go to pro project was the one that we've just uh, entered. Maybe I want to look at uh, uh, another one. And we can double click on these uh, scripts and get them uh, side by side. You could also right click on a, a script and uh, move it into a new window. So you've got another monitor and you want to move that up so you've got full screen. You can do that as well. Um, lots of other functionality up in here. Um, th so we've got the main workspace in the middle. Uh, of course, you, you can see here that we've got uh, line numbers. If I have a look at another script, we can see that we've also got uh, different colors as well that you can uh, uh, change the color uh, for yourself. You can change what, what a comment will look like. And on the right-hand side, we've got the script steps. Uh, really nice that you can uh, go and have a look. We sort of looked at that very briefly. Searching, click down in to see it. And what I really like, especially for um, when you're training somebody up or, or a newbie to the to the platform, we get uh, a help straight in the platform and, and hitting on the uh, on the question mark will launch help. Then you go straight into the full-blown help with the, obviously the examples, the all important examples down the bottom are useful. Um, so you can see what that script step does. So fantastic. Let's uh, let's see what else we've got here. So we can uh, double click in the first line and just by selecting a comment, we can just go and uh, uh, type in our projects, for example. So we can start putting in some uh, uh, some comments very quickly, which is nice because that was, you know, you know, not the easiest thing to do. So it's now very quickly. There's absolutely no uh, excuse not to fully comment out all your scripts here. We can just put line numbers just because I can <laughs> just have some white space in there. So what else can we do? So let's uh, start typing if enter and it's auto completing my if statement, which is absolutely fantastic. So let's, uh, what functionality do we want? Well, we want to go to the projects uh, page and uh, the boss there is saying that people are, are not really completing their projects on time. So let's have a bit of functionality to call that out to people as they're going there. So I know something's going on in the projects table and we can see that we're getting icons here uh, to, to tell us whether it's a field or the table itself. So again, I'm just using the keyboard down to projects and there's something, there was definitely a due, there's something, there you go, due date. So project due date less than um, what was that script again? Get, get, what was it? There you go, get current date. Nice and easy. Amazingly easy now to start uh, bringing in that functionality. So, what do we want to do? Well, let's, um, let's do the old show custom dialog very easily you can see the gear comes up and again whether the gear is present the enter key will open up the the further on uh, dialog box so we can start typing in here um, you know watch out you have overdue projects fantastic so we can okay that and let's see how that uh, works. So you can see we've got a star here until I uh, hit command save, that saves it in. Um, one other thing I wanted to call out for you is that somebody somebody on one of the forums was missing was that uh, you can grant full access through the script menu at the top there. Uh, that would put a little icon uh, on the side there with a little person so you can see which ones have full access. Okay, so let's uh, see how this works. So I can save that and great, I go to the projects and get a, a little window to say I've overdue uh, projects. So a very simple script, of course, but hopefully you can see uh, how fast, how easy that is to do. Um, again, as I was saying, I was at an event doing some scripting, showing some people and I was showing them in 13 and then showing them in 14. And I really didn't want to show them <laughs> 13. I really wanted to just get 14 out as soon as I could and start showing them the new script workspace. Um, 
I think you're going to love it. We've got a lot of really positive feedback about lots of the features, but certainly the script workspace is one of them. Okay. So let's, uh, let's talk about Go for a second here. One of the things that I absolutely love is uh, this functionality here, very subtle, but a three finger swipe. You can actually launch the, uh, the, launch the tool now without any of the, the, the Chrome. And you can see that it's uh, going black all the way up to the top. If it was white, it would be white all the way up to the top. It really, really does start making it look like a, uh, an, a, a, a native application. Uh, me and my colleague Javier went over to Spain and we, we had a, a sign in to an event um, application and we designed it to try and fool the fool the developers and so that they didn't know we we're using Pharmic Go. I won't call out which country that was um, but we managed to succeed all they were very nice and and uh, and uh, went, up, went along with us but we we had a signature capture um, that was obviously a bit new and there's just this new chrome that disappears it was it's uh, just really really nice really lovely to see it. So let's have a look at some of this uh, functionality in the iPad. So uh, again, a little personal tale for me, but my uh, about three years, four years ago, when Farmaker was very, very new, uh, I got my first iPad, uh, gave it to my son at the time that was only two or so, and he was playing on a dinosaur game that was play a video. And I was like, yeah, I could do that. I could, I could, I could build that in Farmer Could Go. That'd be a great little experiment. But of course, the the thing that always used to happen is that you would get um, the the video playing full screen. Well, that wasn't what the applications were like. They were playing within the screen. They would have some information, and you could swipe with two fingers or a finger to get to the next video. And I just the functionality wasn't there. We finally now got it. It's a bit too late because he's five and he's not that much into dinosaurs now. Um, but it really gives us a lot of power now on the iPad for training videos. And I'm sure uh, for a lot of really cool stuff that people come out with. But you're actually able to play, as I demonstrated on the desktop, actually being able to play a video on, on the iPad in line. So so just just lovely to see. And hopefully you can uh, see this over the GoToMeeting. But we can go in there and uh, you can set to approve this and then as you can see i'm typing into that comment box and it's pausing the video so we've got control now we've got scripts and uh, script triggers to actually control the videos in there so i can start saying you know this is great and save that and as you can see my last comment there this is great it actually just it actually have, has um highlighted at what point of the video uh, maybe i want to make an edit maybe i don't think it's great you know cut this out uh, get rid of her dirty souls whatever it may be uh, and i can see other people's uh, functionality i showed this to the very first customer uh, had a meeting with and, and showed it to him and he was just like this is absolutely brilliant this is really going to enable us to work as a team when we're doing video editing to be able to communicate a lot better i mean i've seen emails even internally in farmaker where we've got you know at clip at five seconds in can you please change that or move it here and now we can actually do it and the people can see what we mean and why we mean it um, a lot faster without having to scrub through the video so uh, a lovely little bit of functionality really love it um, it's uh, it's uh, it's a it's a great start um, as, as a slight geekiness if you've got a headphones uh, with the buttons you know the apple standard ones have buttons for the for the, the middle button there's a control for up and down on volume but there's a middle button to pause and stop the video we also can can uh, recognize that sort of access that button uh, and, and take control of that button to pause the video uh, so you don't even have to use i don't know type on the screen you could just be doing it from your headphones which is I thought was quite nice. Okay, so that's all great. That's uh, the, uh, some of the stuff on the iPad, which is fantastic. Uh, one of the things I wanted to show was uh, okay to, to go over to our other uh, other bit of our platform, which was uh, WebDirect. So let me just open up uh, Chrome here. And again, you can see we, sh we saw it on the iPad, but you can see again on the desktop, we've got the custom icons coming through, which is really nice and the ability to filter and, and change them. OK, so um, you can sort of see the taskbar at the top is uh, reactive. We can uh, we're sort of uh, bring in some of these buttons, the, the plus and minus are combining. So we've got a bit of nice little uh, control on there for different screen sizes. Um, 
and it may be hard to see within uh, within the GoToMeeting, but the speed of WebDirect now really does feel better. I kind of uh, think of it uh, the same as when we went from the first version of Go to the second or even the third. There was an application that someone had that was just a, a number keyboard for tills and it was building one for a client. And the first version of Go, it was okay, but it was a kind of a slow tap. You had to sort of slow tap on it. And the next couple of versions of Go we just became so much faster that you could really you could really tap on them and, and get a really good experience. And it's the same with WebDirect now. The second version is so much faster. It really is a, a pleasure to, uh, to work with and, and, and use. Uh, so let's have a look around. So um, obviously the Chrome at the top has changed. Uh, the found set has a little pop-up window, which is really nice. Um, uh, just, it just really is tied, tidied up and, uh, and made a lot cleaner. One thing I wanted to call out was um, to get rid of this Chrome. A lot of people that I saw, of course, wanted to get rid of the Pharmica Chrome. It was a, a portal for clients and they, and they didn't want, they just wanted a web page. Uh, so one of the functionalities to go into is within Pharmica Pro and just to go up to file and that file option again and just this hide all toolbars um, and that will just stop the the, uh, the status toolbar displaying across the whole solution um, uh, on launch so it won't even uh, you won't have any flickering it just comes up very very fast um, and it's really worth having a play with that if you've already got a, a web direct system Okay, so that's WebDirect on the desktop. So let's have a look at uh, WebDirect uh, on the iPad. So uh, again, extremely fast, really rapid. It's really nice to uh, to play with, and we can go in and uh, obviously uh, approve some piece of content uh, on the on the iPad here, nice and fast, and and start typing away. You know, um, Love this shot, whatever it may be. If I wasn't clicking a comma there, um, you know, very very fast to start doing that and start having a conversation. You know, a, a bit of text and approval process going along between uh, uh, between uh, Bill and and Sam there. Okay, so that's all great. Uh, what really blew me away actually is the ability to to go and create new records on the iPad on on uh, on. Uh, Web Direct, we were able to do it on the desktop at all, but this is the first, actually, first time I've seen uh, this being doing doing through a mobile browser. So uh, let's add a you know a new new project. Add some text in there, but we can actually go and upload a file from the photo library or, or take a photo, which would maybe maybe be more uh, useful but say I've, I've already taken a photo or already got one in my um, one of my photo library I can go in and uh, put that in from the mobile browser which is just just fantastic so let's go and see the other side of that if I go to the uh, approvals you can see that Sam has got a little icon there. He's got a little heads up that he's uh, something's come in uh, for him, and you can see it's come from Bill. Nice new project. Here's the uh, here's the uh, something that he wants me to approve, and I can go and uh, mark as received. He gets some feedback there uh, that I've seen it, and my comments are you know it's okay. Uh, so uh, just really really does highlight how uh, we can really get your data. Uh, to wherever you are with whatever workflow, whatever you're doing.